Hello and welcome, my name is Nilaus. This is episode 43 of our Let's Play campaign of Angels Mods Tutorial Let's Play. So this is going to be slightly different from the previous section because as you probably know if you've been following the series, it has transitioned into a stream. So every Monday and Friday, for the time being at least, I am streaming this series, which means I'll be building a lot of, of things, talking, designing, discussing, and I will they'll be available as VODs on my channel. However, I still want to keep this series in a kind of a structured format. So I have decided to also make these kind of intermediate uh, videos. There won't be as many of them, but they'll be after each stream summarizing what we build in a shorter fashion. So if you do not have the time or do not want to watch the entire four hour stream, then you can just get the highlights here. And that's also an option. So I hope this is a, a good way to compromise some with like the streaming experience where there's more direct dialogue and some would you like these uh, shorter, more intense parts. So I will not be building anything, but I'll be reviewing what I built last time. So let's, without further ado, as they say, we'll dive in. Here we start with our robot boss. This is where we started and I have now drawn in more lines. The first objective of the stream was building a block, a city block. So I, building this small block. So this looks kind of random, but it actually, I think there is some merit to it. I hope there is, because otherwise it really wouldn't make any sense. Why are they there? Okay. So what happens is that I get the coils in here and they need to be converted into, into normal iron. See that already now I can see that there is an issue because the iron will, once it's up and running, it will not be able to keep up. I can just see that immediately because it won't be able to satisfy one full of these here. I don't think so. But so I'll have some of these blocks. The point of these blocks is that eventually I can put beacons in here. Already at this point, I can put a beacon in like this. I, I hate the fact that it tries to put modules in. This affects all of these. So just by putting it like here, this I can easily control that. At least I get one beacon in for every every one of these. It's not much, but it actually it does make a difference. I'm nowhere near beacons, so it's not something I really need to worry about. These ones are unbeaconed and intended to be unbeaconed. This here is where we create some of our basic components, such as belts, undergrounds, slitters. It's very nice to be able to now do this. However, one thing is you might have uh, what I am doing here. I'm using I'm using the buffer chest. This was like an experiment. Basically what I'm doing here is saying, I only really want to have hundred in my buffer. So they're here. However, some of the things that, what this means is that the stuff in the buffers count towards my maximum. So if I, for example, set a maximum of uh, up here for, this is uh, the gears. If I set a maximum, in, in the storage network, so like 1000, then these, this part here, the 765 would count towards it, this 1.5 would count towards it, and then it wouldn't be doing anymore, which means that this one, for example, would not be able to request any. And that's the, kind of the, the problem of using buffer chests in this way, because it counts towards the logistics storage content. If you look at the logistics storage, it now has 5.2K of the 5.4, <laughs> Of, of iron gears, but it's not actually available. The only stuff that is available for pickup is actually this one. Because I do not set these, if I set these to re able to request from buffer chest, then they will empty those buffer chests in the middle and then I'll suddenly not be able to do this. And that's kind of a problem. So the way I've solved that is by saying these are not producing until there is a fixed amount in the network, but they're producing until there is a fixed amount in this provider chest. So this would go up to 1000 here, the same for this part, this is 2000 and 2000. And that's actually a pretty clean way of solving it. It works really well. This probably needs some scaling, but that's really not necessary at the in, or it might be, but not right now. So here I have other things that I find useful. The idea is that I have a series such as this. This is my default series. Start with the requester, goes into something. This is for several tiers. So for example, I don't know, let's take, uh, let's take take crushers because there are many tiers. So I take this crusher, then I'll set here, the crusher is equal to, well, in this case, 100, maybe less. Then I'll take the next one, and then I'll be, from here, I'll be copying and pasting it in 
to request the stuff needed. But these ones will not be requested because they'll be coming from here and so on. And then I just continue onwards and onwards as much as I like, except this one I can't do. And then I have to remove this because otherwise... Oops, okay. Stuff is coming in. <laughs> yeah, of course it is, because I clicked it. So just let this come in. I'll pick it up. Thank you. Nothing more inbound. Okay, cool. So that's our default, and I keep this down here as a template, so I can just spam it in here if I need more rows. The middle ones have been are more the high quantity items, such as this uh, here. A lot of things that I needed. Nothing comes out of this, and that, but that's one of the things that we built. The next thing we built was another city block. This city block serves a purpose of building these three items that are needed generally, but and they're, they're kind of low tech, but they also need a bit of space. So I decided to put these together because they are needed for our blue signs. The blue signs needs engines and batteries. And the electric engines, I need that for... Hmm, I wonder what I need to need it for. Electric engines. I need it for a lot of things. But there are some specific things. The cargo bot Mark II is definitely something. So I need to bring this into my, my mall so I can build all of this in the mall. And flying robot, I might need that. The high tech science. Oh, okay. I thought it was actually the middle one. Yeah. Okay. So some fra some robots, but that's it's used for robots Mark II and for the high tech science, but not really needed right now. But it's um, now we have it. It comes in with the lubricant that we created some episodes ago. These are again pretty simple and also subject to. A single beacon being able to be put in here that covers all four here in this location and another one over here so it, it's a cheap way to get some beacons in of course i can also just add it out the outside but let's uh, not get there the way i've done i built quite a few of these for uh for the normal engines because these take 10 seconds so that takes quite a while basically what i'm looking at here is this takes 10 seconds so there's four Per 10 second and it's creating we have 1.25 so that means i basically every 10 second i pre create five of them that means each one of these creates a half a second so this one creates one per second two three four five six per second so that is nothing if you really look at it nothing 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 but i don't want to build it bigger because i can get better machines and beacons and all that good stuff to increase it and modules but at this point if i create six per second Three of them goes up here because they have the same crafting speed. So one, two, three per second. And they each consume an engine unit. So that gets consumed up here. As, and that means this is peaking out at three of those plus three of those or six of these and none of those. That's these and those. Six engines per second or three engines per second plus three electric engines per second. That's the cap. This one is producing a lot more, but it's also used a lot, the batteries. Pretty simple setup again. I can use exactly the same and it fits very nicely. It also here is the nice space for a single beacon that can actually support quite a lot, all eight of them. So that's, uh, that's also pretty good. In the grand scheme of things, I want to have beacons. I want to have more beacons than machines. But that's not what we do at this point. I can, once I get later on, I can easily redo this once I have beacons and modules. So this is this is for the early and mid game. When I really get to late game and just really want to crank it up, I have to redesign this. But that's not a problem. The inputs and outputs should still remain the same. And here we have, this, and that goes out here on the belts. Engines, electric engines, and what are they called? They are called batteries, yeah. So that leads us casually into... Oh, I lost my car. Damn it. I think it's down here. Why did I start by parking my car here? Okay, so one more thing we built. It's a small thing. It's not a big thing, but it, it fits into the greater scheme of things. Is some bronze. Because we need the bronze for a few things. This is pretty simple. Pretty simple setup. It takes... And unfortunately, it takes way more copper than tin. 
I have decided not to build this at ratio. I would need three belts of copper in and one belt of tin. But if I'm really honest, I'm never going to be using this in vast quantities. Well, I might actually for the blue shines, but in, it's easy to go back. Here again, go into a blob, get, get this one filled up. As usual, build a, uh, a warning. So if any of them run low, I get a warning from it. Because the reason why I'm making bronze is twofold. If we look, again look at why we need bronze or honey toast, it is needed for two things. The science pack, the blue science, science pack three. Why is it called science pack three? It's a boring name. Now you can see here, we built the batteries, we built the engines, and now we built the bronze plates. We've not, the electronic, we built at some time ago. The other option is this one, the fast loader, which is absolutely essential. So I need to be able to build this in an okay quantity. Oh my God, I'm a horrible driver. So what we are then doing is we are take going over here. You can see my, the bronze is coming over and it is going up here to a new robo bus area. So I'll have one robo bus here and I'll have another robo bus here. This is now into another location where we start building the science. If we look at the overview picture, I have decided this way of consolidating things. The reason why I let the blue ones be alone is because the blue has a... Oh! Whoa, that's changed. What? It used to be 12 seconds to produce one. Now it's 12 seconds to produce two. Oh, that's crazy. That is crazy. Huh. All right. Well, okay. I'm. I might need to do something different. Okay. Well, that makes blue science a lot cheaper. Hey, that's that's a nice surprise. <clears throat> yeah, you can see I've. Oh yeah, just uh, turned over three thousand hours of playtime. So, and that I did not notice. I don't know if that's part of vanilla or it's part of angels. And when it was changed, I have no idea. And this is where I do as a YouTuber. Let me know in the comments. Yeah, now I'm a good YouTuber. So anyway, back to the topic at hand. I have two iron in because I'm going to need a lot of gears because I need the gears both for here and here. And where's the other one here? So I need another gears. Basically, these one produce once every half second. This one, if it runs full, it produces, takes one every half second. So that means this one is fulfilling that. Down here, I need one every half second, but it produces twice as many. So let's say it uses one every one second to get the same amount when it's in full flow. And that means it this part is taking half of this capacity. And then I'm just basically saying the, the other half of the capacity goes in here because this is 10, 20, and these produce by, one by five seconds. So, that's one, two, three, four per second. Four per second. Yeah, it'll use a bit more. But at this point, it'll work fine. I can always just add another one if I need. But this is pretty simple. This is a pretty simple way. And what I do is then get it out here. And what we are then, this is actually as far as we got, because the next part is taking from over here. We got our engines and batteries. We took it out and got it upwards. And we branched it in here, did a little run by in here. And what I'll also be doing is the similar to this part. This is brilliant in my opinion. I mean, in my honest, humble opinion about my own designs. Basically, this one is producing a lot of the small ones. And that is great because they are just being flown over here and put in here. And then they be, can be grabbed in order to make the belts. Of course, this is maybe one of those fortunate ones, but it's not a coincidence because also here I can do the, the electronic circuit boards. I can also just put a requester like this and that will feed into, then it's only the bronze I need to get in. So I have en batteries, engines, electronic circuit boards and bronze. All we need to make the blue, then we make the blue. And once we have the blue, I'll make it up here, get it in and build some more science. And that's going to be the topic at hand for the next uh, the next episode the reason why i want to do that is basically it it seems a bit backwards but i really need to start consuming my products for example here ah okay well that's a bad one this one i really need to get this one out of the way there's still a consumption of uh okay 
uh, the sapphire that's not being consumed. This one, for example, I still have 1.9 left of coal. But on top of that, I also have in here an annoying 11 million coal that I'm just not using. So all the things I just need to, to work on. You can see here, I need to consume it so I can get rid of these big patches, get them back in here. And I only do that by actually consuming vast quantities. The way I'll consume vast quantities is by enabling science to run and continuing the teching. So I'm going to be focusing basically on science so that I'll be feeding everything into science, just clearing out the entire science facility and then scaling up as I need more, uh, more items for the science. Then let's say, for example, here. Okay, military science, not a problem either. I can do it just to use a crazy amount of a uh, crazy amount of iron, but that's the way. This one is not a problem either. I can do flying robot frames, all that stuff. I can do all of this as well. So I can do the logistic science. I can do the production science. That's also not a problem. And then it goes over to a high tech science. And that's going to be a big leap forward. But I can get everything up to the production science up and running with the materials I have at this point. That's pretty good. And then and that means we can, in our science facility, we can get pretty far down on a lot of all this stuff. It's actually not that much I have left as. I thought, but even to the point of just taking some of these silly ones just to clear them out. I don't know. But turbo loaders. Mm. And then I will be adding more materials as as I need them. Because it has to be on a neat basis. For example, 17 million, I'd like to get that consumed a bit more. Okay, so that is actually the summary. I hope you are enjoying this way of working, of uh, me presenting the base. So we are just walking through some of the items we, uh, we built. And then I'll be back on Monday with another streaming episode. I hope you'll be dropping by at that point. I think it's really fun to have the interaction. And I got some really good ideas about, uh, about what to do and how to do it better. And also avoided a lot of my silly mistakes because I had a few extra eyes to look at them. Anyway, time to wrap this one up. Thank you very much for joining and I hope to see you in a future either episode or stream or both maybe. Bye.